You'd think patients with lung disease wouldn't want to waste a breath. Come to a music therapy session at the Louis Armstrong Center for Music and Medicine, and you'd find out you were wrong. Just one more time. For a patient with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease like Vivian, blowing a slide whistle is work. But after years of attending these sessions, it's become a labor of love. Shortness of breath is the boogeyman of COPD. Vivian's four decade long smoking habit haunts her with every exhalation. When you can't get adequate air and you feel air hungry, um, it's, it's extremely uh, anxiety provoking and people really get very panicky. And so when you do um, play a flute, you have to learn how to control your breathing, how to, you know, when to exhale, when to inhale, and how to pace yourself. How do you feel after one of these sessions? I am sometimes exhausted. Um, What's exhausting about it? It feels like my chest has expanded. It really does. That's the beauty of this class. The science behind whether music therapy can be used to treat the physical symptoms of COPD remains unproven. But there's evidence that music breathes new life into these patients. Is the music kind of like medicine for you? The music really is. Half of people with COPD suffer significant depression, and 20% have general anxiety disorder. So music strikes two chords teaching breath control, and addressing emotional needs. I really do believe in music therapy. I think it's profound, actually. You, you see people in the hospital as they're so depressed and they're so sick, and then a musician walks in and begins to engage them, and, and just it's as if somebody turned a light on in the room. Part of the session focuses on visual relaxation techniques. Give your breath a color your favorite color and see it going all the way to your stomach and going all the way out through your mouth. But when the class really comes alive is when they sing. With Everyday Health, I'm Stephanie Sai.